this is um this zoom is really just to help you guys it's a tool for you really to motivate you obviously christian was a, a really as a graduate obviously went on to play pro in america and in europe so it's really good to have him here um so yeah so basically christian um it'd be great if you could just do a little bit of a short introduction so kind of who you are um your playing background before we so like your high school um and your kind of playing position that kind of thing that'd be really good yeah so thanks for having me first and foremost um I grew up in Orlando, Florida. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of good soccer in Florida. Uh, I played for a club team that's now Orlando City. It wasn't Orlando City because it wasn't, um, you know, at the time it, it wasn't in existence. So uh, I played my youth career there, and then I went to a school called Lake Mary High School, um, and I, I played all four years there in high school. Um, and then from there, uh, I went over to uh, to college before I, I went to Riesa. So. Um, I grew up here in Orlando and now I'm back um, and that's kind of where everything started. My, my playing position is, is striker. I've always been a forward. Uh, that's what I've loved to play from, from a young age. I feel the most fun thing to do in soccer is, or, is score goals. And I mean, some people find a lot of joy in defending and, or goalkeeping or playing in the midfield, but my biggest joy came from scoring goals. And I kind of stuck that from the moment I started to the moment I finished. So. That's about it. Perfect. So moving on to kind of Rieza, um, the Rieza program. So why, what was the main reason why you chose Rieza? Yeah, so I, I got recruited to play at the University of Central Florida. It's a, it's a D1 program in Orlando that people are probably familiar with. I went there my, my fall season uh, as a freshman and I enjoyed pieces of it. And then other pieces I didn't really like. I didn't think I was developing as a player because it's such a short season. Uh, like many people that have been to Riesa have experienced and that's why they kind of chose it. I mean, it's a short season. You don't get a whole lot of personal development. Uh, I was at the age where I, I had just grew maybe like six inches. Uh, I was just learning how, how to get stronger and faster. Uh, and, I, and I needed a lot of development. So for that reason, that's why I explored my options and, and tried to find some place that I could play the whole year round uh, and also continue my studies. Uh, and it just made sense for me um, to reach out to Riesa. It was a brand new program at the time and didn't really know what to expect, but um, it was one of the best decisions I ever made, to be honest. Perfect. Um, so what, what um, type of academic qualifications did you actually leave the program with then? I left with, so I left, uh, my university here with about a year and a half of my bachelor's degree. And then at Riesa, I added an, another year. And then after that, um, I finished my degree online. So kind of have a weird, um, a weird pathway as far as my education goes, but um, it was little bits and pieces and then ended up graduating with a degree in uh, business administration. Cool. Um, can you talk about some of the best moments uh, that you enjoyed uh, when you was in, uh, on the program, on the Riesa program, some of the best moments, the best highlights? Yeah, I mean, some of the best moments are just being around other players. I mean, you're around them all the time. It's a team environment and you're with them for 10 months. A lot of you are away from home. Um, I mean, those are the people you bond with. So made a lot of good friends there and a lot of friends that I still keep in touch with. Um, I mean, one of my best friends is... Um, going to be a part of my wedding is his name is Nick um he graduated from the program uh, and he lives out in in San Francisco I mean we keep in touch all the time so that was a huge huge piece for me um just the social aspect but then also on the football side like we had a, a lot of great moments um I was only there for uh, a full year so it was a kind of shorter shorter time than some of some of the others but uh I mean we were a very competitive team, a bunch of American kids that came over and were away from home. Like we ended up going to, I remember we went to, to Blackburn, I think Mark might correct me on this, but we went to Blackburn and um, beautiful facility, like under 19s. They had a couple of like U23s and a couple of first team players that came uh, to get some minutes. And I think me and Joey both had two goals and two assists. And we came out of that experience as a group being like, like we're just as good as some of these guys. Like, we can compete with with this high level these high level teams and so then we ended up going to Leeds United and I think we lost to Leeds United's academy team but it was like 
super competitive and we went to Barnsley and Huddersfield and th those moments were pretty cool like getting a feel of what the the English you know soccer academy system is like and we could experience firsthand like there's a handful of people that can really do that that are outside of the UK. Sounds really good and um, so how so how did Riesa kind of help you achieve your goals? Um, you mentioned earlier, Logan asked, you know, you had a, a mindset where you, you wanted to be a pro football, a pro soccer player, but did, did Riesa help that achieve your goals and how, 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 did, how did the program really help in that way? Yeah, I mean, the program made it possible first and foremost, um, but also like it kind of opened my eyes. Um, you know, I went over there and obviously soccer is getting bigger here in the States, but you go over there and football is everything like it, they eat, sleep and breathe it. And we went to a couple of games. I mean, my, my first time going, I think I went to a Man City game first. I went to a Man City game. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, this is insane. And this is what I wanted to do. So just the experience helped me. But then also going back to the development part of it, like you're playing 10 months out of the year. And I, I haven't kept too much. I haven't kept up too much with the leagues and that stuff that you guys are playing in now. But Back then, we were playing high-level academy teams, like I mentioned. But then we were playing in, like, uh, a lower division men's league uh, as 18-year-old kids, like, getting beat up on um, and figuring out ways to, to get more physical. So uh, in a development um, perspective, I, I had to learn so many different things that helped me, uh, like, get the tools to then become a, a professional player. Like, without that, if I would have stayed in college, I don't think I would have. I would have ended up where I ended up. So um, I just, there's so many tools that I learned, like bits and pieces that, that brought me to where I was. Amazing. Um, do you have any like little tips or like kind of hacks uh, in terms of uh, like for succeeding on the program? Uh, is there anything that you live by or anything that you can kind of share, you know, anything that you can share really to help these students? Yeah, uh, I tell to all the young players I work with, like, just live in it, you know, like embrace it. Whatever your moment you're in now, even if it's not where you want to be, like you got to live in that moment um, and really make the most of it. If you're negative, if you're like, it's, you know, not this, not that, what I was looking for, it's never going to work. You always have to make the best out of the situations that you're in. And um, I think for me, what helped is, is having my goals um, written down and in front of me that I could see every day that were just little reminders of what I was doing it for. I think that was huge because you have good days and bad days. I mean, I had good days and bad days at Raisa, um, but the next eight years of my career, I also had good days and bad days of training. So having your goals and, and knowing that at the end of the day, um, it's you that um, you're working for and, and it's your goals that you're working for, um, that's super important. Like it's something that you have to keep on your mindset like every single day and not let it, not let it slip, so. Yeah, no, that's that's a great message, especially in these current times that we're facing at the moment with the pandemic. It's definitely something to live by. Cheers for that. Yeah. Um, so we're going to move on to your career now um, and just obviously talk about your career. So if you can, can you just give a, a kind of a brief overview, um, step by step of your your professional career since you left Riesa, kind of what happened, the clubs, where you've been through, what you've been through to, to where you are now, really? Yeah, so I think... Um uh January of 2012 I think um there's a couple opportunities that were that were popping up one was in Belgium I remember one was in Norway and then one was in Finland and for whatever reason we we decided to pursue the one in Finland so I flew up there uh, with a buddy of mine who was also or another another student uh Joey Spivak and we both had trial were on trial there at this club in Finland who was trying to trying to go from a lower level team to a higher level team and it was perfect for me um, because I was 19, um, I needed to learn a lot still. So they liked us, um, signed both of us. And then from there, I played two seasons or two. Yeah, I think two, two seasons there. Um, and then I went over to play in Sweden. I played um, Division One, which is the third level in Sweden. Sweden's uh, a lot more competitive. Um, so that level was good. Uh, I played there for about a year and a half. I signed a three year contract there, uh, but I was there for a year and a half. and then. A new coach came in, um, didn't like my style of play, kind of. I didn't like the coach. And so my former club, who was uh, in the promotion battle to get to the top league, uh, they re-signed me uh, for the last couple months of the season. And then we promoted, uh, played another year there in the top level. And then 
uh, kind of thought I was wanting to get closer to home. So after spending four years, four and a half uh, in Scandinavia, I wanted to get closer to home. Um, so I, I talked to my, my agent and we were trying to find a place in America. Uh, didn't work out. So I signed for a different team in Finland um, for another year. I stayed there and then I prepared a little bit better, made a move to America. And I spent one year in the USL with Sacramento Republic. And then I spent one year uh, in the same league with Oklahoma City Energy um, before I decided to step away. Amazing. That sounds that's such a journey, really, that you've been on. <laughs> yeah, it's honestly like it's a crazy journey. Um, everybody has their own journey. so. Everybody's different, but mine's a little, a little crazy. Just I just pursued the next right thing, you know. So what, what would you say would was kind of this? Well, you might have a few standout. I would say a standout career highlight um, for you, really. What, what was the best moment that you kind of thought, wow, this is amazing? Yeah, I think there was a couple. Um, when we, when we ended up promoting that with uh, the Finnish team that that first signed me, um, we had two other chances to promote when I was there, and we were in the playoff. Um, and we didn't promote. So then this time when we actually did promote, it was like, uh, it, was a, it was a small town, 25,000 people, but football there is everything. And so we had like 5,000 people at that game um, when we got promotion. It was a like surreal experience. Um, but also like along the way, I think playing in America was a cool experience because I was uh, constantly traveling uh, to, to different cities and I had friends in all, all places. So they would come see me play. Um, uh, I think in Sacramento, uh, that that whole season was one of the best ex experiences of my life because, I mean, we sold out sold out every game at 12,000 12, people. So um, just playing in front of that consistently for a, a whole season was kind of like, you know, it's not Man City with with 60, 70,000, but it was it was a piece of my dream that was fulfilled. And so that was a cool moment in hindsight. What does that feel like then being in front of like, 12,000, 15,000 people. How does that feel? Yeah, it's, you can't really communicate as well. <laughs> uh, everybody's loud and making noise. And, um, you know, it was funny in my, my first game with them, I scored a goal, like, in front of the home crowd. And, like, it gives me chills just thinking about it. Like, obviously, that's something that you dream of as a kid. I know it's not MLS. I know it's not the Premier League or playing for my country. But, like, that experience is something that I'll, that I'll live with for a while. Um, and, you know, just little pieces of, of those experiences is what kind of made my career fulfilled, so. Amazing, yeah. So career lows then, obviously, foot, soccer players do have the highs and they have the lows as well. Is there any particular lows that you would like to share with us and how you kind of managed to get through that, through, through them hard times? Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot. I mean, like I know being rejected my, or maybe an injury or something you know where you've had to yeah I had um my second season no I guess it was my first full season I was 19 and I, I was playing in Finland and you know the coach saw a lot in me uh, and so I was starting I was playing right away and then I think I scored a goal early on in the season and then I went like seven eight nine games without scoring and that's just the life of a striker like that's just how it is um and so the coach benched me. I was like, all right, well, you know, the easiest thing for me to do is, is to give up and to just kind of be like, all right, this is my role. Um, but instead, like, you can choose that way or you can decide to, like, put the work in and, and focus on yourself and wait for your time. And that's what I did. So I think four or five games later, like, I came off the bench and I scored two goals. And then after that, I started the rest of the season. I ended up scoring 20 goals that year or 18 or 19, something like that. And the next year, I, I scored 27 goals. And at, at one point, like, I know this is a small thing, but at one point, I was, like, the highest, um, like, goal scorer in the calendar year of all leagues in Europe. Um, and it was it was just, like, you know, one of those things that – I'm saying it now, saying it quickly, um, it seems very easy. But when you have to go day in and day out being, like, okay, am I a bad player or am I a good player because I'm not playing? Um you know, focusing on yourself and, and saying, I'm going to keep working, keep trusting the things that have gotten me here um, and then wait for my time. I mean, that's that's what was most important for me. Amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, just just back to when we asked about the tips about the, the program, really. So any any tips around how you can succeed in such a competitive industry? 
would would it be the same as you know kind of working hard and just getting on with it yeah but believe in yourself too i mean you see all the best players in the world like they they all believe in themselves and i tell my players like you got to believe in, in yourself first before anybody else does like i tell some of my club players or um, the players that I coach now that are struggling with their coaches or in club playing time, like, well, do you believe it yourself first? Um, and a lot of them are like, yeah, well, kind of. I'm like, well, you got to believe in yourself first before anybody else sees it. And people people see the the players that really believe in themselves. And it's a mindset. And that I feel like that can be trained um, just like anything else. Um, you can train your mindset and you can train, um, you know, train that confidence so I think that's huge uh, with with competitive industries because everybody's good at that point cheers yeah yeah so now it'd just be really good if obviously you've you know you've been through our program um you graduated and you've gone on to to make it as a pro so what what do you what would you say really is kind of vital um like a vital recommendation for for our students to kind of achieve their maximum potential whatever that may be what what do you what guidance can you give them really um, you know, I think, I think balancing it all, um, you know, when you're at Rice, uh, like you have the social life, you have the educational aspect of it and you have the football. Um, and if you prioritize one thing over the other significantly, then, um, then it, it's not going to work too well. So, I mean, your education is just as important. Your social, social life is just as important. Um, as the football side of it I know or at least for me there's a lot of us wanted to prioritize the football and um, I think a key is balancing it all and getting your mind off off the football sometimes with with the social and then focusing on your studies just um, you know is, is just as important amazing yeah so you've got a a soccer, you, you have like soccer training academy now, don't you? Do you want to share a little bit about that? Because obviously you've been a pro, but now you've obviously come out the other side of it. And now you've got obviously this amazing thing as well, which you're, you're kind of focusing on. So if you could share a little bit about that, that'd be really helpful, I think. Yeah, I think a huge part for me uh, to develop as a player, I was I was in need of, of technical ability. I know I was always uh, getting better technically because that's what I could control. I was always taking shots, like just getting a bag of balls and going to, to shoot and work on finishing and getting comfortable with it. Um, and so when this whole pan pandemic hit, like after I retired, I was, I was getting into um, some other stuff in the business world. And then this pandemic hit, I was like, really started to think about what I wanted to do. And so I started my own company. Um, I had just like, I had a, a dream or goal to play professionally. Like my dream is to, to help individual players um, get better at what they need to get better at. Uh, I think it, it's a, there's a big missing link um, with the club system here in the States as far as developing technical players. Um, you know, our soccer in America is very physical and fast, strong, but we don't have as much technical players as, as in Europe. And uh, the club system, at least in Orlando, where, I, where I'm at, the club system kind of fails to do that sometimes. And so... I started just um, building with the people that I know, started training the, the players um, that I could and, and learning how I could teach them better and, and show them the skills that I've learned. And um, it's picked up and grown and um, there's definitely a market for it here in, here in Orlando. Um, players are, are latching on to the, the stuff that I'm teaching them and um, seeing some results. And, and it's very fulfilling for me again to be able to help these players um, because just like I said, there's a balance in the school and the social life and the, and the football, like there's a balance within football. You know, you need, you need club training or you need the, the 11 by 11 or the, the small sided, but you also need to do technical work on your own. You need the fitness and strength aspect of it. It's all important. And so I just provide a, a portion of that and, and try to really be a positive influence on these pay, players and, and encourage them as much as I can. So I do that. Um, and then I also coach uh, at a high school. I coach girls soccer at a high school, um, which my dad had coached at for 38 years and he retired. So I took over that. And then I coach a club team now um, because he, I, I picked it up from him uh, and then we'll see how, how long that lasts. So. Amazing. Sounds like you've got a lot on. <laughs>
a lot going on, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that's it in terms of uh, kind of the structured questions. So um, do you have any kind of final last words for anything that you want to add? And then we'll open it up to questions and answers from the students. No, probably not. I probably talked to talked a little too much already. So, <laughs> um, oh, yeah. so yeah, I mean, I said I said my piece. Just uh, any questions like would be great because um, you know that's that's the most helpful way to learn. Cheers, Christian. We appreciate that. So yeah, so um, we'd op we'll open it up to questions now. Um, so if you would like to answer a question, you can unmute and you can speak, and hopefully we can. Can I ask one, Mark? Can I ask the first one? Yes, Mark. Start. Hi, Christian. Do you think, because obviously when I heard you retired, I was like a little upset, really, because I thought, oh, man, you've retired too early. You could have kept playing. And, and the second thing is, do you think you're underachieved at all? I know you had a great time and you, you did some great stuff. Now, at some of the games that you're talking about, like the promotion to the Premier League in Finland, I was at that game. But I always thought you were going to go on and play in the MLS at least. You know, Is that something you regret? And do you think you're underachieved at all? Or are you happy how things went? That's a good question. Um, I think I think I'm happy. I think you know, some people like like yourself can see my potential um, and see like what I can offer a team, and then there there's uh, there's other people that don't. And as I kept moving further and further along in the in the tiers of football, like uh, it 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 got a lot a lot of politics involved, and yeah. there was a lot of people, a lot of coaches that thought one thing or another, and. Um, prioritize especially in America the, the strong fast players um, you know both of, both of my times in in USL I was playing um, you know I was the second striker um, so as it like I was the second striker behind our starting striker um, and both of the times like it was either a strong uh, strong player or a super super fast player I don't have those those qualities and um, I have a lot to bring to the table but not that and I, I feel like I maximized my potential um, in that aspect. And then, um, you know, I had eight years of, of my playing career. Like, um, when it comes down to it, you know, you, you have this passion. And once it, once it starts to deteriorate for different reasons, you start to rethink, you know, what's going to make you the most happy. And, um, you know, for me, it was, it was stepping away from it. And, um, finding my next step you know I'm, I'm still young and uh, I could have kept playing I had offers to play even after I retired yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but it just wasn't right for me at the time no I, and I know and I won't take over the show here but I know I obviously knew the coach in Finland and he was quite direct how he played and and even when I took you to Bradford City and you played in some of the reserve games I always I always have a picture of you going short for the ball and they were just drilled to knock the ball in the corner and it was so frustrating for me watching it and obviously, when I went to Finland and watched it, that were very direct as well. And you were picking a lot of scraps up sometimes, whereas you was an intelligent player who wanted the ball to your feet. So, yeah, it can be tough, can't it, if you get getting with a, a direct sort of old-fashioned coach? Yeah, it was tough. Um, but that's just kind of the way it went. And yeah. I was hopeful that somebody would see my value and um, at some point give me a chance at the higher level because I, you know, I believed in myself still that, I can score goals on any team if the coach is going to let me score goals. But, um, you know, I, I had one, you know, when I went over to Sweden to play um, the year before I scored 28 goals or something like that. And then when I went to Sweden, um, they were playing a 4-4-2 where um, it was like a lot of pressing. So I told the coach, I was like, if you want me to press and defend the whole time, that's great, but I'm not going to score as many goals because I have to do so much work and that's not my priority. Um, so that, that year I scored 14 goals and he was super happy, but me on the stat sheet, I was like, it's not enough. <laughs> Different style. You could have got a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. Yeah. So those are my yes. thoughts. Thanks for that, Christian. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. Um, any, anyone else, uh, have a que question for Christian? Yeah. Hey. Uh, I got a question. Hey, Sammy. Cheers. Take it away. Uh, all right. So, Christian, my name is Sammy. Um, I would just like to ask you, uh, what would you recommend uh, for the seniors as they prepare to graduate? Like, what kind of next steps would you uh, say that we should take? Um, let me ask you this. What are you, what are you passionate about? 
Uh, right now, I'd say I'm passionate about continuing my playing career. And then if I'm not able to do that, then go through coaching. Okay. Um, so if you're, if you're passionate about playing, fi- find a way to play. Um, I really think that uh, everybody can, can play at some level or another. Uh, and maybe that, that means playing on, on a, a semi-pro team or a a men, men's team back wherever you're from, um, you know, and then and then possibly get the chance and explore options to to keep pursuing it. Um, and then with coaching, I mean, it, you're you're all like, when whenever when it comes down to coaching, it, it just depends on how much you want to learn and what work you want to put into it. So, I mean, like the sky's the limit for anybody that wants to get into coaching. You just have to be like willing to learn and willing to put in the time um, and like learn from the people that are that are smarter than you. So whatever my answer to that is whatever you're passionate about, I, I say you pursue it because um, if you're not happy, you're passionate about something and you're still pursuing it just because uh, it's never going to work out in the long run. Thanks, Christian. Thank you, Christian. Thanks. For yeah, the- man. Anyone else have any questions? I've got about 95 questions, Christian, but I won't ask, I won't ask them all. Um, the, the first thing is a comment and the, and the, the second is a couple of questions. I just, I just wonder how many of the guys on the program um, have got a, a strong belief like you had uh, and, and how did you create it? And, and how many have written the goals down like you did when you were starting your, your playing career? So th- that's a comment. Um, my, my question is this, and you talked about balance, you talked about hard work. Could you give the guys three tips about training when they're at the university that would make a difference to them? And also three lifestyle uh, tips, because like you've said, they've, they've got the downtime, they've got the academic qualifications, and they've also got the football or soccer. Um, so if you could give them three tips on each, I think that would be valuable, if, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me start with the lifestyle. I think if I'm just going rapid fire, three three quick things. Um, one, watch football. Not enough play, players watch football. Um, uh, I think that's a huge part of it. Uh, just watch football for fun or play FIFA or whatever you want to do. The second one is find a hobby. Um, you have to find something that, that you're passionate about um, outside of football. I think hobbies, hobbies are great. I mean, I'm not a music person, but you can learn how to play the guitar. You can, I know some people like art, great, do art. Um, you know, I, I found stuff that, that were hobbies for me that then uh, turned into to something that I could, I could use for my business now. Um, and then three, like in, enjoy the moment. Like a lot of people are afraid um, uh, to do stuff outside uh, and what I mean by that is like, you know, when I was there with, with my group, uh, there was a group of us that probably went to like 20, 20 Premier League games or uh, championship league one games, whatever, um, uh, 20 games throughout that year. And then there was other people that would just sit in their, in their dorm rooms and, you know, talk on the phone or miss home or, or play, play video games or whatever. Um, and for me, like, uh, I've always been someone that wants to explore, you know, you remember there's there's a limit to how long you're going to be there so make the most out of it and then um the football side of it like if we're talking about training um i think i think the first thing is is uh, be brave enough to do stuff on your own uh, after training like the best players that i've ever played with professionally um wouldn't leave the training ground uh, first let's just say that um there were there was always something that you could get better at and if it, if it wasn't working on free kicks or shooting, it was playing two touch with, with a couple of other guys, you know, play like juggling two touch every training. There would be a group of a group of players that would do that and a group of players that wouldn't. And uh, throughout the whole thing, the, the group of players that did the extra work were the ones that, that made it in the long run or made it further. Um, I think also uh, strength training and, and injury prevention is a huge thing. Um, that's something that can be done outside of the, the training ground. I mean, you can go in the evening if you're an evening person and just do strength work or um, injury prevention. And that doesn't mean lift hard. That means, you know, work on maintaining your body. Um, 
And the thing that helped me the most uh, is yoga. I did yoga um, twice a week um, throughout my playing career. Um, and that helped me. I mean, I, I got injured one time and that's because I, I broke my foot. So that wasn't something that I could really control. Maybe I got lucky or maybe I just took care of my body, but um, yoga was a, a thing that helped me a lot. Thank you so much. Hope that Absolutely. It certainly does. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Christian. Anyone else? We've got about just under 10 minutes before Christian has to go. So if there's any more questions, that'd be really good. Yeah, I've got a question. Hey, Ethan, go ahead. Uh, so I know that you said you played in USL and then you also played in some of the different leagues around Scandinavia. And I was wondering if you could just kind of comment on how those two leagues compared, sort of the um, leagues in Finland and Sweden versus how you felt uh, the USL game was. Uh, USL was stronger, faster, um, more physical players. Um, Scandinavia was a lot more technical. So, um, you know, I had players in Scandinavia that were that could pass the ball, uh, dribble, all this sort of stuff. But they weren't as physical because that wasn't the style of play. Um, in the USL, like I was going up against six foot five center backs that were like 50 pounds heavier than me. So. Um, it was just a different style of play for the most part. Um, a lot of times I, I felt like it was like Scandinavia and, and European soccer is, is more fun to watch and more fun to play. In the USL, it was sometimes it was, I mean, I played Sacramento likes to keep the ball a lot, but still it was like some of the teams we play, played against, it was, it was just physical. It was just a different style of play and one that I, I don't like to watch and one that I don't like, don't love to play either. Perfect. Does that answer your question? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah. That's the question, Ethan. Any more questions? Yeah, I've got a couple of questions. Hi, Christian. Um, I'm Callum. Um, I've just got a couple of questions for you. Um, the first one is, what moment did you realize you were going to be a professional? Like, what moment did you sort of have that feeling that, you know, I could make it in this? And another question is that, what would you do or, like, you know, tell yourself to do if you were like talking to yourself when you were back at Riasa? Mm, that's, that's tough. Um, the first one, what was the first one again? I got my answer for the second one. Um, it was the first one was what moment did you realize you were actually going to be a professional footballer? Or yeah. Um, when I signed my contract, <laughs> <laughs> um, it was, uh, you know, uh, obviously like I felt, there was moments where I felt like I could be a professional, but like I said, there's a lot of luck that gets involved. There's a lot of luck. You just have to be seen at the right, right time, right moment. And so when I signed my first contract, that was, that was the moment for me. But at the same time, like there was moments while I was at Raisa that I was like, and I can compete with some other players. I mean, uh, like I was scoring goals against, against some of these Academy teams um, that had some of the, the best under 19, under, under 18 players. Did you um, go to against, didn't you, Christian? What was that? You scored two against Ajax in Holland, didn't you? Yeah, that was actually yeah. yeah. Mark brings yeah. Mark, Mark brings up a, yeah. That was a great point. We went to we went to Ajax and um, uh, played their under 19s and yeah, yeah, I scored two goals against against them and that's that was that was probably a big moment for me because I was just like yeah, if I can score against one of the best academy academy teams in Europe, then you know, and they were good goals too. It's not like I just they were tappings. They were pretty good goals. I remember so. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I remember it. So, I remember yeah. it was a great day. Great day. Yeah. That was that was well, well, John, that was John Henry did your first contract, didn't he? Was it John who did your first contract? John Henry? Yeah, he helped. Yeah. He helped you out. Yeah, he yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And then I I think going back to the question, um the second one. What was the second one, Callum? Uh the second one was what did you what would you tell yourself to do or what would you like give advice to yourself to do if you were back at Riasa? If you tell if you were talking to yourself when you were back at Riasa, basically. Yeah, I don't know if I would say this just when I was back at Riasa, but kind of like in my whole like youth career. Um thing I would say would be work harder. Like, I mean, there's always something that you can do. And I, I think that I was a pretty hard, like pretty hard worker for most of my career. But at the same time, like there's always there's always more work to be done. So uh, could I have worked harder? Could I have like done different different things, spending more hours like to to get to a higher level? 
that was always my thing like work harder like you, it does not does not always have to be like uh, doing fitness all the time but like there's always something that you can do to to learn about the game and to get better and like I said sometimes it's just watching soccer for me that's work like once you once you start pursuing the professional career like your work is everything you do to to help you maintain uh, your highest level I mean eating sleeping like all that stuff was work for me so uh, when I was younger I, w I wish I just worked harder a little bit Thank you, Christian. Yeah. We've probably got time for one more question because uh, you have to go at quarter, don't you, Christian? Yeah. Right. If, if he's there. has another question that Christian can answer, that'd be really good. Yeah, I got another question. Thanks, Sammy. Uh, all right. So this question is, um, what are some practical steps to uh, take for continuing to play post Raisa? And kind of like what were the steps that you took, I guess, as well? Yeah, it depends on where you want to play. I mean, if you want to play in America, um, there's a lot of a lot of outlets. Um, you know, a lot of times in America, it's got it's going to cost money, like having these ID camps or these uh, I don't know what you would call them, recruiting camps that they have, where there's where there's coaches watching. Um, that's a that's a big step. Um, and then honestly, like finding contacts that's a, that's a big one too so you just have to find contacts and people know people and can get opportunities um the thing that i learned about these opportunities though is they're they're um the people that have access to these opportunities or are willing to give it um it's all about um their image so uh, they, they're not going to send players they're not sure that they can handle it so uh, if you have a contact or you you know somebody that has seen you play and believes in you, um, I think that's a huge step because they can help you get into different places. I mean, once I started playing in, in Finland, like I picked up an agent that was from Germany and he just had contacts and was reputable and uh, he took me on after seeing me play. Um, and so I think starting somewhere small uh, to with someone that you trust, like – that believes in you you never know where it'll take you I mean there's some UPSL coaches that have contacts and if you're you're the right player and they believe in you um, they'll be able to to get you someplace perfect thank you Christian yeah yeah Christian I think I think you you you've obviously got a time limit aren't you so I think we could really probably end it there um but I think it's been really useful um you sharing your story and kind of having some questions answered and obviously thank you for coming on really and uh, spending some time with us it's been great yeah absolutely if um you know if, if anybody has questions that they were wanting to ask um and didn't get time to like reach out to me on instagram or um give them my contact info or something like that like i'm more than willing to help um you know any anyone that has questions so appreciate that